My next guest is part of their pre- and post-game coverage of the NBA Finals, and you can also catch them tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on NBA Finals Film Room, a new roundtable show featuring former coaches breaking down strategies, trends, and game action in real time as they watch each NBA Finals game. Uh, Mike Fratello joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Mike? I'm doing great, thank you. So uh, what do you think is the biggest difference right now in the NBA Finals going the uh, Warriors' way through five games? Well, obviously the healthy bodies, the depth of the roster that Golden State has, the flexibility and whether or not they want to play big or go small. And when they go small, you know, in the past it's always been building your roster. You have to always keep in mind how many teams you're going to play big during the year, how many teams you're going to play small. And if you're going to go small, are your smalls better than their smalls? Well, it's pretty tough to get a team that has smalls that are better than what, Golden State puts on the floor when they go with those five players. And and probably the second thing that I see is the lack of another person that can dribble the basketball and penetrate for Cleveland. That The fact that Kyrie Irving has been lost uh, to them was, was a devastating blow because all of these perimeter shots that are not going in for Cleveland, if you picture Kyrie Irving in that situation, he's a terrific three-point shooter, so you have to chase him off the line. But he has maybe the best handle, one of the two or three best handles in the NBA when he puts it down on the floor and can finish at the rim. So they're missing that. Uh, Della Vadova has done a terrific job of stepping in and trying to replace with the minutes uh, that they lost with Kyrie. But, you know, Della Vadova is a piece to a team. He's a winning type guy. But in his minutes that he should be playing as the backup to Kyrie, so much more effective than where you've got to throw a whole game on his back. And has he stepped up? Yeah, he stepped up when he got 19 against Chicago and the 20-point game that he had against Golden State. But that happens once every so often. You can't rely on that for seven games of a final. Mike Fratello joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, when, when, what is uh, David Black thinking about right now? Uh, we went off the air last night, and we put the show together that will air tonight that you mentioned, Film Room. Uh, my final thought was that David Blatt right now is trying to decide what lineup do I come out with in Game 6, which is our survival game uh, in, the, in the NBA Finals. Do I go back to the uh, Mozgov, Tristan Thompson, LeBron James front line, uh, or do I change and perhaps just play one of the big men, maybe Moskov alone, and back him up with Tristan Thompson and stay with four small perimeters where LeBron would be your power forward in that situation and then bring on a James Jones or play Shumpert and Jr. together out there. Uh, does he juggle the minutes of Del Vadova and try to get by without Del Vadova on the floor where you have a LeBron, a Jr., Shumpert, and that next shooter, whether it's Jones or Mike Miller, that type of thing. I mean, he's got combinations that he could think about using. But then again, when you hear people criticizing some breakdowns that Cleveland had last night defensively, I mean, shame on those people. They, they've got to understand that you've got such a, a, a scrambled lineup out there. These guys aren't used to every rotation from every position mm -hmm. that they had to make now with the new lineup set Black's been forced to put out there. So you're going to have an occasional breakdown. I think the fact that they went as far as they did, as long as they did, and then it was just that flurry of Seth Curry catching on fire, a couple offensive rebounds they put back in, and the game goes from two or three and you know, up to ten right away, and that's the end of the night. Do you think Blatt is looking at anybody else on his bench that he hasn't even called, hasn't even looked at, nobody's even ripped off uh, their, their, pull, their, their, their uh, warm-up? Jersey, maybe like Sean Marion. Is he just? Is there any possibility that we see someone in Game Six that we haven't seen anybody yet, Mike? Marion, Marion, you're right. I think Marion would be the only name that makes sense. I mean, to put Perkins in there, what, what's the reason? If you're going to go with one big, you've got Mazdoff, back him up with Tristan Thompson. You need scoring. That's what you need. Uh, you, and, and Perkins isn't going to go in there and get you 15 or 20 points. Uh, so you've got to make up the points. Love being out. Kyrie being out. Uh, but a guy like Marion, in, in a game against a small Golden State team, that's an environment that he's flourished in in the past. Now, I don't know if he's injured. I don't know if he's hurt. But uh, if not, maybe that's the move that you make. Maybe you put him out there to get that energy, offensive rebound, and try and run the floor, get a couple easy ones. But 
it's tough to say try and run the floor and get some easy ones when you're trying to control the tempo on the other end. So you have to pick and choose your places. If you've got a two-on-one, three-on-one, you've got to take advantage of that. Right. If there's a block shot or a steal and you have numbers, you take advantage of that. Otherwise, you're coming down, bringing it up, running your sets, making Golden State have to play defense longer than they want to. NBA TV's Mike Fratello, at Mike Fratello on Twitter, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Do you ever lie to the media in the way that Kerr did to protect uh, pushing a button that he had already planned to do? Mike, that ever happened to you? Well, you know, I, I can claim at my age, I can claim the <laughs> beginning stages of dementia coming in, so it's not lying. Steve is too young, so he has to be honest and say he lied. But, you know, I can just say, like, oh, you know, I didn't remember that. I must have been thinking of something else Yeah. <clears throat> at that time. Excuse me. But, but did you ever find yourself in a situation like that, Mike? Uh, if I did, I would just avoid the question. I would just say, you know, right now, I, I'm not sure. I'd rather not. Mm -hmm. Go into that at this time. We, you know, we'll meet back with the staff again and make a final decision just before the game. Right. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'd come out and just blatantly say it. But then again, I've never been to the NBA Finals coach of the team, so yeah. maybe if I got there, right. maybe I'd use it the way Steve did. Yeah, sure. Oh, and do you think LeBron should be named MVP of these finals, even if um, uh, the, the Cavs wind up losing, based on what you've seen from LeBron so far, Mike? I'd probably have to base that on the next game or two that, that Curry has because if Steph Curry has two more games or one more game like he had last night and you know, the previous game and they wind up winning the whole thing, then he's probably deserved of the MVP in the finals as well. So uh, based on what you have seen, uh, and again, this is an excellent show, NBA Finals Film Room uh, tonight at 9 Eastern time on NBA TV. Based on what you have seen, how do you think this winds up? these next two games or even just one more game uh, in the NBA Finals, Mike? I said in the beginning it was going to go seven. That was my thought. So, therefore, I have to give Cleveland winning the next game, going back home in a, 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 uh, an environment uh, where these fans, just like the Golden State fans, have waited a long time. The Cleveland fans have waited a long, long time for another championship. And uh, I, I think they may be enough – uh, and it would take Shumpert making shots mm. and Jr. making shots over the course of the game, not just LeBron alone. LeBron getting 40 and those other guys not contributing is not enough. It's LeBron getting his 35 to 40. It's James Jones coming in, knocking down a couple jumpers. Shumpert hitting a couple jumpers. Jr. being consistent throughout the course of the game. That's what they need because any game that winds up over 100, Cleveland seems to be in trouble. If you can keep it under 100 and those guys manufacture some points for them, they've got a chance to win. And I'd, before I let you go, uh, Mike, I'd love to give you the floor on just how good LeBron is is, is performing right now. I mean, you've seen uh, all-time greats like uh, Dominique up close and personal from all your years in Atlanta and what a star can do uh, by putting things on his back when everybody expects it. Well, I'd love to just give you the floor on just how LeBron is doing it right now. I caught, our, I caught our group last night making, um, criticizing or pointing out, whatever the correct word was, small things that LeBron had done you know, wrong or we felt could have done differently or better. And I, I stopped in the middle of the show and said, you know, I want to just say this. For those viewers out there, we, we're not criticizing him. We're, we're kind of breaking down why that just happened. But to find fault, whether it's his shooting percentage is not what it should be, He's got to manufacture shots. You know, people would always say, what's the difference, you know, when you came from college being an assistant at the collegiate level for eight years and moved to the NBA, what are some of the things that jump out at you that are so different? And one of them was that I said it's so hard to get a shot off in the NBA against the defenders they have. And you don't realize that because they're so athletic, they're so long, they're so quick just to get a shot off requires so much work. So to free yourself up to get that shot off requires so much work. LeBron, in, in his high game, his playoffs, has had 38 field goal attempts. I think he had 34 again last night. That's a lot of field goal attempts for somebody to take. But if he doesn't take them, who's going to take them? There's not another guy out there creating shots mm. off the dribble other than LeBron. So it's something he's been forced into. Nobody's more of a team player than he is. He knows 34, 36, 38 shots is too much for him to take. But he has to take him to give his team a chance to win. Mike, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. We'll chat soon, hopefully. Thank you. You bet. That's Mike Fratello of NBA TV joining me here 
on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.